All right, here we go. I'm going to be a straight shooter. This is about as challenging as it gets when we're doing two-dimensional kinematic motion. All right, so here we go. We got a student that's a little bit unhappy about the last quiz, decides to bomb my house with bananas using his old Cessna airplane. He's flying horizontally with a speed of 200 meters a second and flies over my house with a height of 500 meters. We're assuming no air friction. The question asked, being asked, letter A, how far in advance should he release the bananas? All right. So that should kind of make sense that we're looking for that because if my house is down here at the bottom... He can't wait till he's right over me because if he waits till he's right over me and drops it, it doesn't drop straight down. It continues forward with the same speed that it had before, which means it's going to completely miss me. So he's got a plan to drop the, the uh, bananas before he gets to my house. So where exactly? And the, dis the question is how far? So what distance in advance does he need to, to, to uh, drop those bananas? All right. So what we're going to do is we're gonna list out the information that we have. And you guys know the best way to do this is literally just to list it out. We're gonna create a table here. We've got our initial position, final position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. And we're actually gonna do this both for the horizontal and the vertical. Because we're not, re obviously we want a horizontal distance. That's what we want. But we need to know exactly what equations we're going to be able to use and, and how we're going to be able to put this all together. Sometimes we have to go to that vertical first and then that will help us get the horizontal. But let, let's see what we got. So we're going to assume that our starting point here is zero horizontal displacement. That, uh, that horizontal displacement there, the final, that's actually what we're looking for, right? We need to know how far horizontally in advance do we need to drop the banana. So that's what we want. We know the initial velocity is 200, and I'm just going to write 200 here. It is in meters per second, so that's SI, so that's fine. And then we're going to say the final velocity is also 200 because horizontally it continues to move at that 200 meters per second. That means the acceleration is zero, and of course we don't know the time there. Now, of course, that leads us to a problem because all of our kinematics equations, if we try to use one that has these two velocities in it, it's going to cancel out. The acceleration is going to make it zero. So really, I need to. the only way that I can do this to be able to find the displacement is if I have the time. And so recognizing I need the time, we're going to look at the vertical information as well. Okay, it does say that I'm flying from a height of 500 meters. So I'm going to say that vertically, I'm starting up at 500 meters. When the bananas get to the ground, they're going to have a height of zero meters. So that's right as it hits the, the, my house. Okay, the initial velocity. Now we're looking at the initial vertical velocity. So as the plane is flying horizontally, it doesn't have any vertical velocity. It's just moving horizontally. We have to separate those two things in our minds. And so our initial vertical velocity is zero. Our final, we don't know, but we're going to leave that blank because we'd prefer not to have to mess with that if possible. The acceleration, of course, vertical acceleration is negative 9.8. Now notice that that was the vertical acceleration. It was not the horizontal acceleration. We keep those two things separate. And of course, the time is the time that we're going to solve for. Now we're going to be able to do that. We need an equation, hopefully, that does not include this final velocity here because we do want to avoid that if possible. So the only equation that that works for is the one that is x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. We notice that our initial position is 500, our final is zero, so we can actually throw these numbers in. Zero equals 500. It is important that you do it this way to make sure that the positive displacement, we're gonna displace downwards, so we need to go from 500 down to zero. And then plus the v naught t, so initial velocity was zero, so this guy is actually gonna go away because my initial velocity here, I'm looking at the vertical still, still, that's zero, and then plus the one half times negative 9.8 times the time squared. 
And of course here, we can just punch that into our calculator. Beep, 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 beep. And we get that t equals 10.1. Now, if we're looking at sig figs, the number of significant figures that I have is only one significant figure, right? And so I would round it to 10, except this isn't actually my final answer, right? The question is, how far in advance should he release the bananas? So now I know the time it's going to take. That's the time it takes to get from up here all the way down to the ground where it's going to hit my house. And so at this point, I can now put that into my x because the time's going to be the same. I can put that in for my x, and now I can calculate the distance that I need there. We're going to use exactly the same equation, right? We're going to go x equals the x naught is 0, so that's going to be 0. The initial velocity is 200 times time, which was 10.1. And then in this case, the acceleration is zero because we're looking at the horizontal there. And so that last term is going to be zero as well. And so we're going to take that 10.1 and multiply it by 200, and we get 2020. And so x, because it's 2020, I'm going to round it to one sig fig, which will be 2,000 meters. And that's going to be our answer for letter A. And that might be surprising. That's two kilometers. You need to drop it two kilometers in advance. But that's because he's going so fast. He's going 200 meters a second, right? That's pretty fast, even for an airplane. He's, he's cruising along. So he needs to drop that significantly ahead of the house if he wants to actually hit the house, okay? Letter B asks, what will the speed of the bananas be when they hit my house, okay? Now we can actually use the same information that we were using before. We can use the information from our table there, and now we actually have that t is 10.1 and 10.1. Now one thing to keep in mind is it's asking for the speed when they hit the house. Okay, When they hit the house, it's going to have some vertical velocity. Okay, It's going to have some vertical velocity because it's dropping but it's also going to have some horizontal velocity, which we already know what that is. That's 200 meters per second. In the absence of air friction, there's no horizontal acceleration. So therefore, the bananas should just continue forward at 200 meters a second. So really what I need here is I need that Vy. I need to find the velocity vertical. And so now, remember in the last question, we kind of avoided this, but now we're gonna go ahead and calculate that the easiest way to do that is probably just to use our equation V equals V naught plus AT, right? And so our initial velocity was zero. So our final velocity is going to equal the acceleration, which was negative 9.8 times the time, which was 10.1. And we get a velocity of negative 98.98. And I know you're going to be like, but it's negative. Yes, yes, it's negative. Why is it negative? Because it's going down. That's good. It should be negative. It has a negative acceleration, and it started with a velocity of zero. So it should have a negative acceleration. Now, I am going to go ahead and use that full number for now. But in the end, remember, I only want one significant figure. So that's negative 98 0.98. If you use 99, it's probably going to give you the same thing anyway. But I do want the total speed, which means I need to put those two velocities. Those are instantaneous velocities, right? That's the instantaneous horizontal velocity. It's also the instantaneous vertical velocity when it reaches the ground. We do want to put those two together. Notice they are vectors, so you can't just add them together. You actually have to do Pythagorean's theorem there. So we're going to do that 98.98 squared. We're going to add on a 200 squared, and then we're going to square root the answer, and that will give us our final answer where we have a speed of 223 meters per second. Now, if we're doing this correctly in one sig fig, then we won't answer 223, we'll answer to one sig fig, which is 200 meters per second. Now, you may think that that's weird, <laughs> and yes, maybe it is that my final speed isn't really affected by that vertical. Well, the reason being is because we don't know if this is exactly 200 meters per second, 
right? It could be 190 meters per second and it's been rounded up. It could be 223 meters per second and it's been rounded down. We just don't know and that's the whole idea of this significant figures. There's only one significant figure there. Your final answer should only have one significant figure. But on the AP exam, you need to make sure to show all of this work. If you're not showing all of this work over here, then you will not get credit for the final answer because you haven't shown that process that you need to go through in order to get there. All right. Now, uh, the last step is it actually asks for the velocity of the bananas when they hit the house. And please don't say, isn't that just the same thing with the biowater? No, it's not the same thing. Okay, remember velocity must have direction. And the direction, as we can see in our drawing here, is down and to the right. And so we actually need to come up with a direction there. This right here is zero, remember? And so we actually need to come up with an angle here. All right, the easiest way to do that is probably to find this angle right here and then subtract it from 90. And so that's what we'll do. We're gonna find this angle and we're gonna use tangent. So we're gonna say tangent of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. And we're gonna find out what theta is. And I got 63.7 degrees which we're gonna subtract from 90 because again, we want this guy up here. And so we've got an angle of 26.3. Now again, I only had one sig fig up there on the top. And so our final answer will need to be in one sig fig. So my final answer for letter C is gonna be this. I'm gonna go 200 meters per second and then I'm gonna give it an angle I'm gonna give it an angle of negative 30 degrees. Now, it's negative because I rotated clockwise from the zero instead of counterclockwise. And it's 30 because I did have to round it to one significant figure. And so that will be my final answer for the velocity. I hope that's helpful. And uh, use this technique when you're dealing with two-dimensional kinematics.